Hello and welcome to MIP TV and as usual and um, as always Bob Cook from the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy is going to share his love of literature and one really really seminal book that we're going to look at today it's uh, it's a book that every supervisor should have on the shelf I've got it on my shelf book about my shelf book my bookshelf even um, really really seminal book and I know when I did your supervision course Bob it was one you recommended that we all go out and buy and it right. is supervision in the helping professions yes by Robin Sherwood S-H-O-E-T and Peter Hawkins yes yes and it I, I'm going to be quite bold here Bob I think it's a book that even if you're not a supervisor, it's useful to have. Yes, absolutely, because it also talks about the nuances of supervision and it also gives you great insights on um, your own effective supervision. Yes, yeah, because once you, once you look at it, you can, you can see if your supervisor's working effectively. It's a bit of a yeah. check and a balance, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think. Absolutely, that's correct. How to use your own supervision effectively. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's all about developing that self-supervisor, which is just so important for practitioners. And, you know, in case anybody does know what the self-supervisor is, do you want to explain that, Bob, the, the famous phrase, the self-supervisor? Well, Patrick Caseman, who was a very famous uh, British uh, psychoanalyst, still alive, actually. I remember seeing him about 25 years ago. He, he wrote a seminal book, and I think it was probably, it would be, I don't know, late 90s, and then he followed up with another one. Anyway, this book was called Learning from the Patient, and he was talking about uh, his cases of clinical vignettes, if you like, mm -hmm. in, in psychotherapy. Um, but he went on to coin uh, a phrase called uh, the internalized supervisor now it wasn't him really i mean we go back in time but supervision is a young profession mm. and his uh, he, his thinking was we sort of create a third eye mm. and that for our own supervisor our own particular supervisor which we all have we develop almost by osmosis i think it's transference uh, but anyway um we develop an internalized super which is supervisor which is very much like our own supervisor that we see ourselves as supervision. And then gradually, gradually over time, that supervisor, uh, which is called the internalized supervisor, becomes integrated for your own style. Yes. Yeah, and it's interesting. And when I was training, my, my tutor taught of the helicopter skill, yeah. where, where you're this way, you're in front of the client and you're working with the client, but a little bit of you is hovering over the top, like in a helicopter looking down and seeing it from a, a, a literally a third eye yeah a meta perspective is that what it's called a meta perspective mm. wow what does that mean what, when you say meta perspective bob meta is a, <laughs> it's a very good analogy of yours i really like your helicopter skills yeah yeah it's like a um a third dimension meta means third dimension third dimension yeah third dimension and it's it's one of the things i hope that counseling students are taught to develop that internal supervisor yeah. because yeah. it's so useful i found it so useful to mm. work with a client and all of a sudden um you, you you're you're kind of having a conversation with yourself and saying you know why why, why am i using that intervention why am i doing this and why am i feeling the way i am and mm. it's this transference and, and it's amazing once you become kind of um, seasoned in the work it's mm. amazing you can have these two conversations almost simultaneously with between yourself and the client and you and yourself and yourself <laughs> but try to explain it to anybody and they look at you and they're like how, how does that work but it's one of those things it's, it's, it's metaphysical isn't it you can only you can only kind of understand it if you experience it no, no, I agree. yeah so that's a really interesting um, notion on the self supervisor so why why is this book so important do you think because it is an important text isn't it yeah, yeah. it's one of the few books that came along it came along in 1989 and we've had many editions since then um but in terms of a seminal textbook it brought many models of supervision together 
I mean, if you look at the book, uh, the beginning part of the book is definitions of supervision, and then talk about supervision skills, and then goes on to talk about a really um, basic model of supervision, which they call the seven-eyed model of supervision, and talks about different dimensions within uh, this global model. Um, it's really a process model of supervision, looking at how the um, two relationships, you know, where you, your client and you are operating in your uh, practice, your therapy room. And then, of course, you go and see your supervisor and you've got the relationship of yourself and your own supervisor. Mm. How those two merge together in a process-oriented one. So, for example, you're working with your client and your client brings the anger issues. And they talk to you about anger issues and you go away feeling angry. Uh, you may then go to your supervision, so you've got supervision the next day. You walk into the supervision room and you start acting in an angry way with your supervisor. So the anger has been passed to you in your own therapy room, kind of consciously. You then take it to your supervisor and those two relationships I've just talked about get acted out. So that they call this the process model mm -hmm. and have seven stages within the process model uh, which they uh, examined. So you could see that the model could be used as a grid. You could see where you are in the supervisory process, or look at how those two relationships merge together. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes you have to work with um, projective identification, yeah. um, where a process fires up within the uh, the therapist that Correct. that is that is a, a transmitted process from the clients or clients angry and all of a right. sudden you yeah and then sometimes you have to work with um parallel process and right. there's a big debate on on parallel process um parallel process sometimes appears in the therapy room where you're trying to separate your stuff out from the clients and that can be right. confusing but it's also the parallel process also is in the um also in the in the supervision room where right. the, the process is par the process that the supervisee is bringing parallels the Correct. process the cl the client has. So on a very simple scale, client's angry, supervisee comes in angry. <laughs> so yeah. Client's confused yeah. and lost, supervisee comes in. That's the classic one, isn't it? Both stuck stuckness. Yeah, it's just and you know as uh, therapists. It's really important, of course, and ethically important that we have su supervision. Oh, yeah. And when we get stuck, we go to see our supervisor. You know, that's the normal process. It's a very protective process for yourself and for clients and a, and a learning environment as well. And usually, and quite often when we're stuck, it's because uh, we're carrying material that has been projected from the client onto us. Mm -hmm. And then we get confused and then we go to our own supervisor and we may carry out or carry through the same unwanted material and pass it on to the supervisor. Mm -hmm. And the supervisor's job is to actually um, help the supervisee stroke therapist be aware of that process. Yeah, yeah, to act as a, a third eye. Um, and the book beautifully illustrates this, the seven-eyed model. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, there's a video and... A video that we did which yeah. which which did the entire sev seven eyes i'll put a link put a link in the in yeah, the yeah, comments yeah. bar below That's, oh yeah. yeah um where we went through the seven the seven mod seven st the seven eyes of it yeah, um yeah. yeah it's it is a brilliant book isn't it bob and for me, I'm I'm always kind of popping my nose and then going, oh, I didn't realise that. Oh, that's that's really interesting. Just to kind of refresh my memory, what what does it bring to you, Bob? The book. Well, the other model I like, of course, probably well, just as much as this model, and I often think about this, is the dimension of uh, developmental process and supervision. Mm. So, in other words, a developmental model. Because it's very important for therapists to think developmentally what age is the client um, coming from in the therapeutic process. And it's the same for supervisors. So a supervisor needs to think when a supervisor comes to see them or a young therapist comes to them for supervision, they need to think, well, 
how long have they been working as a psychotherapist? So for, for example, someone who's been working for six months will need different developmental needs attuned to yeah. than somebody who's been working for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so unless the supervisor attends to that uh, developmental process, then um, they can often um, miss the mark altogether with their supervisees. Yes, it's, it's true, isn't it? And, and there's the triangle, the famous triangle, isn't it? The formative, normative, and restorative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Triangle. Yeah, yeah. So information, support, yeah. but also um, procedural things, you know. And then right in the middle of that, of course, is ethics. Yeah, absolutely. So, so a supervisor has many different um, tasks, if you like, from the administrative procedural tasks to being a gatekeeper of ethics, mm. an educating task, a consulting task, a counselling task. So they hold a lot. And this book helps the reader understand not only what supervision is, but the complexity of supervision. Yeah. That's one of the things I learned on um, on your course, Bob, was oh. that was that it was which I to sit in. Correct. Because Correct. that that is that is and that that is um, directly um, generated by how the supervisee presents. And, yes. Um, yes. And so so you you have to have one before you can do the other. You can't just sit there and think today we you know five minutes before the supervisee turns up going to be in mm. seven, we're going to be talking about what's going on. Because that doesn't attend to the supervisor these needs at any level, does it? No, I mean, we can borrow, for some of our, borrow as supervisors some of the therapeutic cast and skills we've got, like, you know, tuning, staying, you know, and being with the uh, supervisee stroke therapist. But one aspect of supervision which is different is that we need to bring a level of proactivity mm. supervision if you like um, and that's also talked a lot about in this book so it, it, it covers a lot a lot of ground this book mm. and it's very helpful for somebody who's beginning out as a beginning out for supervisor yeah. or wants to refresh their skills yeah yeah and I also think it's useful for for, for therapists who are not supervisors maybe if they get a copy to read it because it really good, gives a good idea of how to how to work with get the best out of your supervision because yeah, you can speak the same the, the same language yeah definitely so it's a really important book in fact i've been well, a supervisor for 25 years i've been teaching supervision for a very long time and if somebody asked me one book this would be it yeah, yeah. so there, there you have it you can't get a better recommendation from bob who's been a supervisor for a quarter of a century yeah, a long time now. And um, supervision in the helping professions, one of the most well-known, well-respected texts, Robin Short and Hawkins. I don't know. The, Peter Hawkins. Peter yeah. Hawkins. Yeah. So, so there you have it. And as usual, Bob isn't um, being paid as a book reviewer. <laughs> He's uh, just reviewing the books because uh, he enjoys sharing his love of literature with the with the audience. So we'll put a link in the in the comments bar below. So. Um, we, there's a link to the book and also we'll, we'll put a link into a, one, a couple of other things that people can look at maybe those videos yeah. of uh, yeah. me being yeah. supervised and as always Bob thank you very much and uh, we'll see you in the next book review you will do this is number 23 coming up I think this is number 22 itself but yeah, yeah. 23 is around the corner it literally is we'll see you there <laughs> thank you